I now call this meeting of the Jacksonville City Council to order. <clears throat> We're going to rise here in a moment for the Pledge of Allegiance led by uh, Mayor Pro Tem Mike Lazar and uh, followed by our invocation. If you would please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our Heavenly Father, as always, we pause at this time to give you thanks. And tonight we give you thanks for allowing each of us to see this new year. We remember tonight firefighter Jason Avalos and Staff Sergeant George Barris, both who've been lost in the last few weeks, George being our veteran liaison. <coughs> we pray, we give thanks for their service and we pray for their families in this time of loss. We give thanks for the life and the service of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We pray that his dream will become our dream for equality and justice for all. We remember our service members who are serving us here and around the world. We pray for their safety, for their anxious families. And as always, we ask your guidance and your direction to be with our mayor and with our council. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> <clears throat> Council, uh, you've seen a copy of the agenda for tonight's meeting. Uh, I would entertain a motion to uh, adopt the agenda. Mayor, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll adopt the agenda consideration of moving item number 13 to consent. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, our motion carries. We have some presentations tonight, and I will come around front here. Uh, home holiday uh, decorating awards. I saw a lot of great decorations out in the city of Jacksonville this year. Uh, people really have the spirit. The Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee has recognized outstanding holiday decorations for the past four years. <clears throat> it's all, the, all part of the ch uh, ch charge to create Awareness of the Clean and Green mission of the city. The awards also are designed to encourage city residents to show off their community pride and light up the city during this special holiday season. This year, in addition to the nominations made through the web and by phone, the committee took to the streets of Jacksonville in two vans to uh, look around. That sounds like a lot of fun, that job, to look at the uh, some of the nominees and add some that they saw out there to the list. Uh, it says, the group here wishes to acknowledge more than 20 entries into the, uh, con or the, uh, the awards. It says, many are posted to the city's Facebook page and were the subject of a full page feature in the Jacksonville Daily News. The committee is elected to award four as the winners of the 2016 Holiday Decorations Award. This evening, I would ask the families of uh, <clears throat> the Roxana family, are they here? Come on up with me. Hey, how are you 
to you. Good to see you again. Yeah. This is uh, how many years in a row? Four. <laughs> Halloween. Well, thank you so much for for your your spirit, your community uh, spirit there. Uh, Nicole Roxana lives in the home on Delos Court that was nominated, but said it's a family effort, and that produces the winning nominate accommodation. Who's who's Nicole? No. Oh, the wife. Okay. <laughs> All right. The home was festively decorated for the holidays with ta uh, tasteful placements of complimentary colors nicely arranged to feature the home. This high-end dec decoration is the first award for this uh, recognition. And if you'll notice, we have them up here on the uh, overheads, the screens. And uh, you give them that. Let's get a picture. Where's our photographer? So are you the en you're the engineer behind how this stuff gets done, I just right? Say what I want done. You, <laughs> and you and you do it, and you do it. Okay. I I understand. <laughs> I do understand how that works. <clears throat> Y'all stay up here with me. Uh, with Donald G and Lucy Q de Hagara, I hope I said that right. Please come up. Did I pronounce that correctly? D. Hagara. Okay. Thank you so much. Let's talk about this here. They originally, uh, what their intent was to delight their uh, grandchildren during the holidays, and the D. Hagara family uh, now continues their tradition on Empire Boulevard to delight the neighborhood children. They have received much praise and fulfillment from their work. This impressive display greeted the selection committee with a candy cane uh, entranceway, welcoming Christmas characters and a well-decorated home. That's really pretty. Yeah, that's very pretty. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Got it? Okay. Next, I'd like to recognize the efforts of the Miller family for their work on Audubon Drive uh, and ask them to come up. Was, uh, this is the home of Charlie and Dr. Deborah Miller. Uh, the home features peekaboo Christmas trees. <laughs> Not sure what a peekaboo Christmas tree is. Okay. But it looks nice. In the second floor windows. Okay, there we go. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> and brightly lit characters to welcome all. Not only does it have hundreds of lights, but music as well. And several members of the committee had a particular fondness for that. And thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Next, I would uh, like to welcome the Euricio family up up here. Are they here? Euricio? Are they not? Uh, anyway, they're on my street, Northwoods Drive. Uh, and I, I know the house. They really went all out. Uh, spotted by the selection committee and instantly was a favorite. Yes. <coughs> That's, that's full steam ahead there. <laughs> that big old uh, Snoopy, he had a tendency to go over when the wind picked up. <clears throat> but it was very nice. Uh, you know, the thing about it is, it, it, you know, it's great to see you folks uh, get into this. I mean, it, it's really beautiful, and it, it really just brings the essence of the time of year to life. And thank you so much for taking the time, the effort, and, exist, and exerting the energy to do all this, because I know it's, it's not easy, is it? 
But thank you so much. For what you're doing. I ask Carmela George to come up with and help me out here. Carmela is the community programs coordinator. And we are going to induct uh, some new youth council officers tonight. And uh, uh, tonight we're going to administer the oaths of office for the new officers of the Jacksonville Youth Council. Our youth council serves to give youth in Jacksonville a voice. And this year we actually went, uh, took a step, a very positive step and including them in our volunteer uh, workshop that we had uh, on the 3rd of, of January. And they provided, y'all provided us some very, very useful information. And thank you so much for taking time out of your, uh, your uh, holiday. You were still on holiday, I believe, from school uh, to come and do that. So <clears throat> we do uh, welcome their input. You know, this is, gonna, this is their community. They're the rising stars here. So. Um, let me call them up. Adesha Wong, OJ, OJ Bobo, I know that. <laughs> He's from my old alma mater, Jacksonville High School. Yes, sir. He's going to be the chairman. Seth Rudinger. Rootlinger, I'm sorry, is the vice chairman. Good to see you again, Seth. He's from White Oak High School. Brooke Gruber. Hi, Brooke. Brooke is the secretary, the rising secretary, and Brooke is at Northside High School. Naya Thompson. Naya is going to be the new recorder. And she hails from Jacksonville High School. Taylor Rudder from White Oak High School. She's occupying the White Oak High School representative seat on the Youth Council. The Jacksonville High School seat will be Carolyn Marks. The Northside High School seat is Leslie Trong. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Leslie. And from Richlands High School, we have Janelle Libby. Janelle. Janelle Libby. Is she not here? Okay. She was unable to be with us tonight. Okay, so we're going to have to um, use some strategy here as far as... Oh, yeah, we're going to get them up first. Okay. Uh, the parents. Uh, of, I know the proud parents of a lot of these children are here tonight, or these young men and women are here tonight. If you would uh, come up, I know some of you are going to hold uh, the uh, Bible for the swearing-in ceremony. Are you, are you a senior this year? Or? I'm a sophomore. sophomore. Yes, Good. I'm going to have you around for a while. <laughs> I'm going to do this. Uh, how about the three of you come out right over here on this side? Bibles. Come on up here. How you doing? We need to uh, turn to the person holding the Bible. Up here. Kind of, yeah, you, you want to kind of, yeah, there you go. Okay, everybody ready to go? I'm going to turn around here and face y'all. left hand on the Bible and raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that, I will support and maintain that I will support and maintain the Constitution and laws of the United States. 
Constitution and laws of the United States. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. Not inconsistent therewith. Not inconsistent therewith. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. The duties of my office. The duties of my office. As state your office. As of the Jacksonville Youth Council. Of the Jacksonville Youth Council. And maintain and uphold. And maintain and uphold. All the laws and regulations. All the laws and regulations. Of the city of Jacksonville. Of the city of Jacksonville. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, new officers. So you're officially politicians. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get a big picture. Connie, you Mayor, where are you? All right. all right, let's tighten up here. We all love each other. Come on. Squeeze in a little bit. Just make sure everybody can be seen. Still time for one or two more. Everybody good? Did it work? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Everybody good? <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Yes, please. They want to do a silly one. A silly one? No, that's me. You're the youth council. <laughs> so that includes you, Mayor. Three, two, one. I don't know how to be silly. <laughs> did that so good. I really did. Proud of you. I'd like to ask uh, Chief Mike Inero and Lieutenant Stacy Lyle to come forward to accept an award. I always like to see Stacy because she was my first charge when she came on the police department. <laughs> National Night Out brings communities together nationwide to promote police community crime prevention efforts. The National Association of Town Watch has selected the City of Jacksonville as a national award winner for 2016 National Night Out uh, that was held on August 2nd, 2016. This is the eighth consecutive year uh, that National Night Out Award for Jacksonville. So this is the eighth time they've won it in a row. 2016 National Night Out was held at Riverwalk Park in downtown, in downtown Jacksonville and hosted over 12,000 people and was just a, a remarkable success. Accepting on behalf of the National Night Out Committee is Chief Mike Canero, the Director of Public Safety, and Lieutenant Stacy Lyle. And there is your 2016 award to hang right next to the 2015 award. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. need to stay with me. Okay. Did y'all get get a picture, Brittany? Okay. If you have not been to National Night Out, please make it a point. First Tuesday in August. It's a great event. You can learn a lot about what your public safety folks do. Thank you. 
Thank you. Can I say a word? Yes, ma'am. Please do. I would like to thank the entire staff of the city for this, um, as well as several other law enforcement agencies throughout the community. Everybody does put a big hand in this, especially um, my co-chair, uh, Corporal Vanessa Smith, and our media liaison, um, Beth Purcell. She makes us look great on paper, along with our media services, Lisa Miller, and the staff there. They put together the whole awards package that submitted for this award. And I would like to, there's way too many people to thank the entire city, every department, every division of the city puts in for this. And we all work really, really hard on it. I'm glad y'all come out and enjoy it. Thank you. All right, proud and sad, here we go. I got two folks here tonight that have decided to, it's time to turn in the old badge, right? Hate to see it. Hey, but you're gonna enjoy yourself, trust me. You'll find plenty to keep your, yourself <laughs> occupied. Um, I'm gonna call up. Uh, first, I'm going to call up Officer George Barrage. First time I ever met this guy right here, believe it or not, was in a gym. <laughs> Before he was... Boy, he was a policeman. He just retired from the Marine Corps, hadn't you? As a master gunnery or gunny sergeant. Yeah, he looks like a gunny sergeant, don't he? Uh, the reason I, I first I noticed him, I heard this squeaking noise next to me where I was doing bench presses, and it was the bench next to me that was squeaking under the stress. <laughs> <clears throat> In 1968, at the age of 17, George Barrage enlisted in the United States Marine Corps. His military career included service as an infantry unit leader, platoon sergeant, drill instructor, and military police officer. His military awards include the Navy Commendation Medal, Navy Achievement Medal, <clears throat> Combat Action Ribbon, Meritorious Unit Com Commendation, National Defense Service Medal, Armed Forces Expeditionary Medal, Vietnam Service Medal, Humanitarian Service Award Medal, Vietnam Campaign Medal, and the Vietnam Cross of Gallantry. He retired in 1990 at the rank of Gunnery Sergeant. George completed the basic law enforcement training at Coastal Carolina Community College in 1990, and he began his civilian law enforcement career with the Jacksonville Police Department. He served his entire 26-year career in the patrol division. He also served as a field training officer and on the tactical team, that's a SWAT team for you lay people that are here, uh, for two decades. He holds the North Carolina Intermediate Law Enforcement Certificate, and he also has an Associate of Arts degree in Criminal Justice from Coastal Carolina Community College. During a recent retirement gathering held for George at the Department of Public Safety, he remarked that as a small boy, he had two dreams, to be a Marine and to be a police officer. The city of Jacksonville has been very fortunate has been a very fortunate recipient of George reaching his goals and commends him on his dedication, loyalty, and professionalism to the city. And I personally can speak to the fact that George Barrage is as loyal as they come. He's as dedicated as they come. And, you know, despite the fact that he worked under me most of the time, he was a daggone good friend and somebody you could talk to and, and really enjoy their company. And George, I wish nothing but the best. I know you're going to stick around here and I'll see you. Oh, no, you're not going anywhere. 
There's a badge. Okay. <laughs> and here is your service sidearm. I am so honored and proud to present to you, sir. Thank you, George. Thank you for all your service. Thank you. I'm going to let you hold this thing. It gets heavy. Daisy, you're next. Jazz, you want to come up here with her? You want to sit in the audience? Okay, I got you. <laughs> come stand with your wife. This is one of my former troops, too. Good man. Hard-working police officer, just like his wife. <laughs> <clears throat> Daisy Haywood completed basic law enforcement training at Coastal Carolina Community College in 1987 and began her law enforcement career with the Jacksonville Police Department in September of that same year. She served in patrol, evidence, and in the street crimes unit. Corporal Haywood was a detective for both juvenile and adult investigations, and a daggone good one. You worked, you worked when I was in charge of it, weren't you? Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> she, made, she made me look good. In 2001, she was selected as a school resource officer. In 2008, she transferred to the uh, DARE unit, the Drug Abuse and Resistance Education Unit, where she served until her retirement. Daisy spent many years working directly with the youth in our schools and in our community, and she's had a profound impact on many lives. <clears throat> Corporal Haywood was also a field training officer, a hostage negotiator, and Spanish language interpreter for the Jacksonville Police Department. She served as the agency's coordinator for the North Carolina Special Olympics torch run. Kudos. Mm -hmm. She also served as coordinator for the Operation Medicine Drop since its inception in 2009. And in addition, she holds the Advanced Law Enforcement Certificate. Again, I'm going to go off the script for a minute and say that <clears throat> during the 31 years that I spent out there, I was very honored to have such outstanding police officers that worked with me and under my command while I was in a command position. And I was, wasn't really joking when I said they made me, they made me look good. Because without them and, the, and their dedication, their honor, and their integrity, the, you know, I, I don't know what I'd have done without you. Great people. Thank you so much. Thank you. And you get a badge. Thank you. <laughs> and I don't, as a bonus, we're going to give you... Your service weapon. Yay. But anyway, thank you so much thank for you. your service. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Chaz. Good to see you. I need you for a little bit longer. Uh, I need you, you want to say a few things about them. Uh, I do want to. I do want to say that you know here you see two people that uh, have a lot of impact on that agency. You know that's the problem with retirement. You know you lose that experience and it, it's hard to get it back. But you know there's there's a lot of good officers in that agency that will rise to the occasion. But you guys will be missed. I'm telling you, you guys and gals will be missed. Anyway, Chief. George and Daisy, you all are the rock of our department, and there, you are leaving us with a, a large void that uh, is going to take us time to fill. You know, it's, uh, we're going to miss you tremendously because of your wisdom, 
you know, between you, you have 60 some years of service to our agency and that kind of knowledge, that kind of dedication doesn't exist in, in, a, lot, in a lot of communities. And we appreciate all that you have done for us. You know, I, I often talk about Daisy because I said on, during National Night Out, everybody recognizes Daisy, nobody recognizes me. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's such a, such, you know, what you've done with the kids and what George has done to train all those new officers. I, I suppose it would take us 30 or 40 minutes to list all the officers that he's trained over the time. So your, your dedication has not gone unnoticed. Thank you very much for, for the tremendous work that you've done for our agency. I also want to thank the members of the police, uh, the men and women of the police department that came out tonight in support of these two fine people that are retiring from your ranks. It's something for you to look forward to. It's, uh, you know, you got a great job. You got, you got a heck of a lot of responsibility, but you're where you are because of your ability, your ability to do it. Brittany, did you get plenty of pictures? You got them? Good. Thanks, Chief. The members of the police department here, please rise and be recognized. Except the undercover guys. <laughs> <laughs>
I have to give Uncle Sam day. before I can retire because they have a, they have a, a, a basically a, pretty much a. What happened to you? Yeah, I mean, I did, well, he did a difference. I had him do all my. That's, that's all. <laughs> he did all my. PT he did all your heavy lifting. Yeah. Yeah. Sam, you hung out. Now we got to work out. Yeah, he did all my PT. <laughs> Number 12. All right, so now we're going to resume uh, the meeting here. We're going to go straight to agenda item number 12. And this is a public hearing on the Unified Fied Development Ordinance Text Amendment. Amendment to Article 5, Uses Standards, Section 4.1, the use table, subsection B, use table to allow dwelling single family uh, detached in the RMF HD zoning district. And Jeremy Smith will be presenting this item. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of the City Council. That's correct. This is a staff initiated unified development ordinance text amendment to the residential multifamily high density district within the use table. Uh, staff believes that adding the allowed use for single family dwelling, which currently is not, uh, is necessary. The ordinance as it stands for the RMF HD district has standards already for single family. We believe it was an oversight in the adoption of the UDO. And uh, over the last few months, we've received a number of calls from attorneys, real estate, um, real estate appraisers that are interested in 
single family homes that we have found that are located in the RMF HD district. Right now, if something were to happen to those homes, they are non-conforming. They may not be able to be reconstructed. Um, so we are recommending that single family dwellings be permitted in the RMF HD district. Uh, most notably, the Foxhorn Village area is one where it is zoned RMF HD. The Planning Advisory Board heard this text amendment at their January 9th meeting and has recommended approval along with staff, finding that this would advance the public interest by creating more development opportunities and reducing nonconformities within the city. And I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Um, with this high density, okay. Um, what is the average lot size? What is the lot size on those? Right now, the um, RMF HD allows a 25 unit per acre, 25 units per acre. The typically are apartments. However, uh, the standard it sets for single family is 3,000 square feet, uh, which is similar to our downtown residential zoning. So if you wanted to, if, if you had the zoning, your lot would have to be a minimum of 3,000 square feet for a single family dwelling. Council, any questions of Mr. Smith? Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you. This time we'll recess the regular council meeting up in the public hearing is in this matter. Is there anyone present that wishes to speak on this? Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing. Council, you're being asked to uh, consider the zoning text amendment. Mayor, I'll make a motion to approve the UDO text amendment found in attachment A as presented. Second. second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? Right, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Thank you. Last section of public comment for the evening. Uh, still no one's signed up. Anyone changed their mind about wanting to speak? Seeing no one, we're going to go to reports. And I'm going to start with Mr. Willingham. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I wanted to commend our media department with um, Lisa, Kimberly, Kevin, Allen, and Glenn. Uh, they just do an outstanding job um, on a, on a uh, regular basis. And when we need special things of them, they really um, produce. When we had the Freedom Day program, um, the videos that they came up with to supplement the presentation was just fantastic. Everything was on point. It was so appropriate and relevant to the, the parts in the program that um, it was just uh, unbelievable how they did that. And when I've needed something to adjust or even present here at city council meeting, they come up with it just like that. And so um, I think uh, Glenn said Kevin had a lot to do with the Freedom Day um, uh, videos. Uh, and I'm certainly appreciative of that, and it is just worthy of mentioning. And listening to the presentation about um, National Night Out, it just made me think about events in general. And I think you can tell the character of a city by its events. And I'm really proud of the events that we have, both uh, city sponsored and sponsored through our partners and the uh, nonprofits. I had the opportunity to attend Muff Point um, uh, Ladies Auxiliaries um, sponsoring of the um, the scholarship event that they had, and uh, that was an outstanding event. And there were several events. Uh, Coastal Carolina Community College um, had a um, day of service. And, um, you know, centered around equality and justice and just making a contribution. And it's just beautiful that we have all of these events. Um, one thing I would like to, to see is um, <coughs> a little more cross support. 
you know, I have my event. I'm focused on my event. I don't support another event. I'd like to see more uh, cross support um, with people supporting all of these events that support these um, worthy issues. Nothing further. Mr. Baker. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, a little report on the Civic Affairs Committee, which met last week. The committee recently evaluated their role in the Freedom Day observance that Mrs. Will Will Mr. Willingham has just uh, made note of, and they voted to continue their association. They believe it is an, int an integral part of civic education that the group is charged to do. I reported to you in April that the committee was considering the creation of the Fabric of Our Community Award. Uh, the Civic Affairs Committee is elected to do that in concert with the Volunteer Onslow Golden Rule and Daily News Lightkeeper Awards. A subcommittee is currently considering the award, and the award is to be given when someone or a group epitomizes efforts to make this community better, whether by a one-time significant action or a lifetime of action. The, these awards were, are set to be given at a joint luncheon Friday, February 24th, uh, 12 noon. Uh, the group's next major project is set for their February meeting to begin again the review of the Civic Index, which is a barometer of the health of the community and civic activities, and they hope to present their report to the council and county commissioners in March. I might say that I've been working with the Civic Affairs Committee for almost four years now, and they are not only a committee that's really interested in advising the affairs of the city in terms of civic activities, but they also are the hardest working committee that I think I've been experienced with in, in, the, in the city. They not only come up with ideas and projects, but they volunteer actively to donate their time and energy to carry out those activities. They've been involved in the Arts Festival, the Freedom Fountain rededication, and many other activities that don't come to mind right now. But my compliments to them and to uh, Glenn Hargett for providing the staff support and to Mr. Do-It-All in the community, Dr. Don Herrick. The last thing I want to report on is uh, Mr. Lazara and I met with the new executive director of Onwasa, Jeffrey Hudson, last week to learn of his expectations for the job and perhaps him to learn our expectations. I was pleased to learn we are going to update our master plan for Onwasa and particularly pleased to learn that uh, Jeff is planning to meet with all the managers of the municipalities in hopes of what Onwasa can do to encourage orderly development adjacent to these municipalities' borders that will further tax revenues and have Onwasa or whoever extend basic municipal services. That's all I have to report. Thank you, Mr. Bender. Mayor Pro Tem Lazar. No report, Mayor. Thank you. Ms. Washington. Um, yes, I have a report for the Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee. I'm pleased to announce that I had an opportunity to accompany this committee back in December when we toured um, the city of Jacksonville to determine the holiday house decorating contest. And so we really had a wonderful time just getting out and looking at the participation of the citizens, just really getting involved in the holiday spirit, which was um, captured with the awards that was um, issued tonight. The committee will also hear future presentations with our sanitation superintendent, Mr. Kerry Terrell, to talk about issues regarding recycling and the citywide cleanup that's set for April. In addition, we have more um, presentations to come from the Parts Division, Code Enforcement and Community Development in terms of how we can better beautify and continue our efforts for the city of Jacksonville. And that's my report, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Thomas? Uh, no report, thank you. Mr. Carter? No report, ma'am. Uh, Dr. Woodruff? Good evening, Mayor, members of Council. Uh, several things. First of all, the annual spring 2017 Citizen Academy 
If you're interested in learning more about the city, applications can be filed online or you can simply contact the mayor's office. The deadline for enrollment, though, is Friday, February the 17th. Citizens Academy this year will be held on Wednesdays beginning March the 1st and then continuing for a series of Wednesdays. So again, if you're a citizen of the city of Jacksonville, we would encourage you to sign up for the Citizens Academy. Secondly, the federal government through the FEMA program is in the process of updating the flood maps for the city of Jacksonville as well as many of the communities in eastern North Carolina. There will be two public hearings, not public hearings, public meetings. One will be January 25th at the county courthouse in the afternoon and then at uh, Sneeds Ferry in the evening. And on, February, on uh, January 26th, there will be one here at City Hall from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Now, the, the FEMA flood maps are proposed to change the elevations for the minimum floor elevation for a single-family home. There are many properties in Jacksonville that may be impacted. We strongly encourage the public to follow this. We will be uh, not only a live presentation here in this chamber on January 26th, beginning at 4 o'clock, but that will be uh, video uh, rebroadcast a number of times. If you are interested in learning more, you can also contact the city's website. We will give you direction to the state website where you can gain information on this. The importance to you is this could impact your insurance. So we strongly encourage you to look at this. This is a federal program, not a city program. It is a federal program. We are simply the host of that meeting. We'd also like to mention this evening that um, the The City Council meeting uh, will continue after this meeting in workshop session. We recessed in order to come into session. We will go back into workshop in just a few minutes. Tomorrow we will have, as was mentioned, the ceremony uh, for the passing of George Barrows. If you are in the downtown area, we would encourage you to stand along Newbridge Street. As a caisson, we'll carry the casket and body from Jones Funeral Home to the Veterans Cemetery, which is adjacent generally to City Hall. That caisson should move through the downtown area somewhere in the vicinity of 115 to 130. Mayor and Council, as always, we appreciate the service and leadership you give this community. Thank you. Council, I'd entertain a motion to uh, adjourn. So moved. All in favor? All right.